Saint Brigid of Kildare or Brigid of Ireland Irish, NAOMH Brid, Latin, Brigida, c. 451–525 is one of Ireland's patron saints, along with Patrick and Columba. Irish hagiography makes her an early Irish Christian nun, abbess, and foundress of several monasteries of nuns, including that of Kildare in Ireland, which was famous and was revered. Her feast day is 1 February, which was originally a pagan festival called Imbolc, marking the beginning of spring. Her feast day is shared by Dar Lugdach, who tradition says was her student, close companion, and the woman who succeeded her. The saint shares her name with an important Celtic goddess and there are many legends and folk customs associated with her. Name the saint has the same name as the goddess Brigid, derived from the Proto-Celtic asterisk Briganti, high, exalted, and ultimately originating with Proto-Indo-European asterisk Br. In Old Irish her name was spelled Bridget and pronounced Brid. In Modern Irish she is called Brid. In Welsh she is called Freyd, Lenited to Freyd as in several places called Lansamfraid, Saint Bridget's Church. She is sometimes referred to as the Mary of the Gael. Topic. Historicity Topic. There is some debate over whether St. Brigid was a real person. She has the same name, associations and feast day as the Celtic goddess Brigid, and there are many supernatural events, legends and folk customs associated with her. Some scholars suggest that the saint is a Christianization of the goddess, others that she was a real person whose mythos took on the goddess's attributes. Medieval art historian Pamela Berger argues that Christian monks took the ancient figure of the mother goddess and grafted her name and functions onto her Christian counterpart. Professor Dathy O. Hogan and others suggest that the saint had been chief druid at the temple of the goddess Brigid, and was responsible for converting it into a Christian monastery. After her death, the name and characteristics of the goddess became attached to the saint. Life Topic. Probably the earliest biography Life or Vita of St. Brigid is that by St. Brocken Cloen d. 650. A second life was written by Cogatosis, a monk of Kildare in the 8th century, and is a fine example of Irish scholarship in the mid-8th century. The life attributed to Colin dating ca. 625, derives further significance from the fact that a foreword was later added to it by St. Donatus, also an Irish monk, who became Bishop of Fiesole in 824. Donatus refers to earlier biographies by St. Ulton and St. Aileron. These differing biographies, giving conflicting accounts of her life, have much literary merit in themselves. In the controversy about the historical existence of Brigid that erupted in the last third of the 20th century, researchers noted that eleven people with whom Brigid is associated in her lives are independently attested in annalistic sources which place her death at AD 523 in the Annals of Tigernach and Chronicon Scotorum and her birth at 451, calculated from her reputed age of 72 at death. Early life According to tradition, Brigid was born in the year 451 AD in Fowart, just north of Dundalk in County Louth, Ireland. Because of the legendary quality of the earliest accounts of her life, there is debate among many secular scholars and Christians as to the authenticity of her biographies. Three biographies agree that her mother was Bracca, a Christian picked slave who had been baptized by St. Patrick. They name her father as Dubthatch, a chieftain of Leinster. The Vitae say that Dubthatch's wife forced him to sell Brigid's mother to a druid when she became pregnant. Brigid herself was born into slavery. Legends of her early holiness include her vomiting when the druid tried to feed her, due to his impurity. A white cow with red ears appeared to sustain her instead. As she grew older, Brigid performed miracles, including healing and feeding the poor. According to one tale, as a child, she once gave away her mother entire store of butter. The butter was then replenished in answer to Brigid's prayers. Around the age of ten, she was returned as a household servant to her father, where her habit of charity led her to donate his belongings to anyone who asked. In two lives, Dubthatch was so annoyed with her that he took her in a chariot to the king of Leinster to sell her. 
While Dubthatch was talking to the king, Brigid gave away his jeweled sword to a beggar to barter it for food to feed his family. The king recognized her holiness and convinced Dubthatch to grant his daughter her freedom. Topic. Religious life Topic. It is said that Brigid was veiled or received either by St. Mac Cale at Croghan, or by St. Mel of Ardagh at Mag Tulloch the present barony of Fartala, County Westmeath, who granted her abbatial powers. It is said that in about 468, she and St. Mahold Mackay followed St. Mel into the Kingdom of Tethbay, which was made up of parts of the modern counties Meath, Westmeath and Longford. According to tradition, around 480 Brigid founded a monastery at Kildare Sildara, Church of the Oak. On the site of a pagan shrine to the Celtic goddess Brigid, served by a group of young women who tended an eternal flame. The site was under a large oak tree on the ridge of Drum Criad. Brigid, with an initial group of seven companions, is credited with organising communal consecrated religious life for women in Ireland. She founded two monastic institutions, one for men, and the other for women, and invited Conleith Conlid, a hermit from Old Connell near Newbridge, to help her in Kildare as pastor of them. It has often been said that she gave canonical jurisdiction to Conleith, Bishop of Kildare, but Archbishop Healy says that she simply "...selected the person to whom the Church gave this jurisdiction," and her biographer tells us that she chose St. Conleith "...to govern the Church along with herself." For centuries, Kildare was ruled by a double line of abbot bishops and of abbesses, the abbess of Kildare being regarded as superior general of the monasteries in Ireland. Her successors have always been accorded episcopal honour. Brigid's oratory at Kildare became a centre of religion and learning, and developed into a cathedral city. Brigid is credited with founding a school of art, including metalwork and illumination, which Conleith oversaw. The Kildare Scriptorium made the Book of Kildare, which drew high praise from Gerald of Wales Geraldus Cambrensis, but disappeared during the Reformation. According to Geraldus, nothing that he ever saw was at all comparable to the book, every page of which was gorgeously illuminated, and the interlaced work and the harmony of the colours left the impression that, "...all this is the work of angelic, and not human skill." According to the Trias Thaumaturgia Brigid spent time in Connacht and founded many churches in the Diocese of Elphin. She is said to have visited Longford, Tipperary, Limerick, and South Leinster. Her friendship with St. Patrick is noted in the following paragraph from the Book of Armagh. Inter sanctum patricium brigitonque hibernisium columpnas amicitia caritatis inerritanta, ut unum cor concilium qua haberant unum. Christus per illum illumqua virtutes multis perigi. Between St. Patrick and St. Brigid, the pillars of the Irish people, there was so great a friendship of charity that they had but one heart and one mind. Through him and through her Christ performed many great works. Topic. Death Topic. The monk Ulton of Ardbrocken, who wrote A Life of Brigid, recounts a story that Darlugdach, Brigid's favourite pupil, fell in love with a young man and, hoping to meet him, sneaked out of the bed in which she and Brigid were sleeping. However, recognizing her spiritual peril, she prayed for guidance, then placed burning embers in her shoes and put them on. Thus, by fire, Alton wrote, she put out fire, and by pain extinguished pain. She then returned to bed. Brigid feigned sleep, but was aware of Darlugdach's departure. The next day, Darlugdach revealed to Brigid the experience of the night before. Brigid reassured her that she was now safe from the fire of passion and the fire of hell hereafter and then healed her student's feet. So devoted was the student to her teacher that when Brigid lay dying Darlugdach expressed the wish to die with her, but Brigid replied that Darlugdach should die on the anniversary of her Brigid's death. Saint Brigid is said to have been given the last rites by Saint Nini when she was dying. Afterwards, he reportedly had his right hand encased in metal so that it would never be defiled, and became known as Nini of the Clean Hand. Tradition says she died at Kildare on 1 February 525. Upon St. Brigid's death, Darlugdach became the second abbess of Kildare. Brigid's prediction has traditionally been considered to have been realized in Asmic as the Catholic Church records Darlugdach's date of death as 522 and Brigid's as 521 and has assigned February 1 as the feast day of both saints. The name Darlugdach also spelled Dar Lugdach, Dar Lugdacha, or Dar Lugdacha means. Daughter of the God Luck. Topic: 
Miracles associated with Brigid Brigid is celebrated for her generosity to the poor. In her case, most of the miracles associated with her relate to healing and household tasks usually attributed to women. Brigid, who had a reputation as an expert dairywoman and brewer, was reputed to turn water into beer. The prayers of Saint Brigid were said to still the wind and the rain. When Brigid was of marital age, a man by the name of Dubthach Maku Luger came to woo her. Since Brigid had offered her virginity to God, she told the man that she could not accept him but that he should go to the woods behind his house where he would find a beautiful maiden to marry. Everything that he said to the maiden's parents would be pleasing to them. The man followed her instructions and it was as she said. In one story, Brigid protected a woman from a nobleman who had entrusted a silver brooch to the woman for safekeeping but then secretly thrown it into the sea. He charged her with stealing it, knowing that he could take her as a slave if a judge ruled in his favor. The woman fled and sought refuge with Brigid's community. By chance, one of her fishermen hauled in a fish which, when cut open, proved to have swallowed the brooch. The nobleman freed the woman, confessed his sin, and bowed in submission to Brigid. A similar story is told of Saint Mungo. On an occasion when Brigid was traveling to see a doctor for a headache, she stayed at the house of a Leinster couple who had two mute daughters. The daughters were traveling with Brigid when her horse startled, causing her to fall and graze her head on a stone. A touch of Brigid's blood healed the girls of their muteness. When on the bank of the river Inni, Brigid was given a gift of apples and sweet sloes. She later entered a house where many lepers begged her for these apples, which she offered willingly. The woman who had given the gift to Brigid was angered by this, saying that she had not given the gift to the lepers. Brigid was angry at the nun for withholding from the lepers and cursed her trees so they would no longer bear fruit. Yet another woman also gave Brigid the same gift, and again Brigid gave them to begging lepers. This woman asked that she and her garden be blessed. Brigid then said that a large tree in the virgin's garden would have twofold fruit from its offshoots, and this was done. One of the more commonly told stories is of Brigid asking the king of Leinster for land. She told the king that the place where she stood was the perfect spot for a convent. It was beside a forest where the members could collect firewood and berries, there was a lake nearby that would provide water and the land was fertile. The king laughed at her and refused to give her any land. Brigid prayed and asked God to soften the king's heart. Then she smiled at the king and said, Will you give me as much land as my cloak will cover? The king thought that she was joking and agreed. She told four of her sisters to take up the cloak, but instead of laying it flat on the turf, each sister, with face turned to a different point of the compass, began to run swiftly, the cloth growing in all directions. The cloak began to cover many acres of land. Oh, Brigid, said the frighted king, what are you about? I am, or rather my cloak is about covering your whole province to punish you for your stinginess to the poor, call your maidens back. I will give you a decent plot of ground, the saint was persuaded, and if the king held his purse strings tight in future, she had only to allude to her cloak to bring him to reason. Soon afterwards, the king became a Christian, began to help the poor and commissioned the building of the convent. Legend has it, the convent was known for making jam from the local blueberries which was sought for all over Ireland. A new tradition is to eat jam on 1 February in honour of this miracle. After Brigid promised God a life of chastity, her brothers were annoyed at the loss of a bride price. When she was outside carrying a load past a group of poor people, some began to laugh at her. A man named Basin said to her, The beautiful eye which is in your head will be betrothed to a man though you like it or not. In response, Brigid thrust her finger in her eye and said, Here is that beautiful eye for you. I deem it unlikely that anyone will ask you for a blind girl. Her brothers tried to save her and wash away the blood from her wound, but there was no water to be found. Brigid said to them, Put my staff about this sod in front of you, and after they did, a stream came forth from the ground. Then she said to Basin, Soon your two eyes will burst in your head, and it happened as she said. She is associated with the preservation of a nun's chastity in unusual circumstances. Liam de Paor and Connolly and Picard in their complete translations of Cogatosis, give substantially the same translation of the account of Brigid's ministry to a nun who had failed to keep her vow of chastity, and become pregnant. In the 1987 translation, a certain woman who had taken the vow of chastity fell, through youthful desire of pleasure and her womb swelled with child. Brigid, exercising the most potent strength of her ineffable faith, blessed her, causing the child to disappear, without coming to birth, and without pain. 
She faithfully returned the woman to health and to penance. Topic veneration Topic Brigid is said to have been buried at the right of the high altar of Kildare Cathedral, and a costly tomb raised over her adorned with gems and precious stones and crowns of gold and silver. Over the years her shrine became an object of veneration for pilgrims, especially on her feast day, 1 February. About the year 878, owing to the Scandinavian raids, Brigid's purported relics were reburied in the tomb of Patrick and Columba. In 1185, John de Courcy had their remains reburied in Down Cathedral. Brigid, the Mary of the Gale, is esteemed highly in Ireland. St. Brigid's popularity made the name Brigid or its variants such as Bridget, Bridie, and Bree popular in Ireland over the centuries. One writer noted that at one time in history, every Irish family had a Patrick and a Brigid. In the 19th century, as many Irish women emigrated to England seeking jobs as housemaids, the name Brigid became virtually synonymous with the word woman. Topic: <inaudible> Relics. Topic: A skull said to be Brigid. S has been preserved in the Agreja São João Baptista Church of Saint John the Baptist in Lumière in Portugal, 38 degrees 46 minutes 29 seconds north, 9 degrees 09 54 W near Lisbon Airport since 1587 and is venerated on the 2nd of February, not the 1st of February, as in Ireland. Saint Brigid. S. Head was reputedly carried to King Denis of Portugal in 1283 by Irish knights travelling to the Aragonese Crusade. According to Denis Murphy, when the relics of the saints were destroyed in the 16th century during the deputyship of Lord Grey, Brigid's head was saved by some of the clergy who took it to the Neustadt, in Austria. In 1587 it was presented to the Church of the Society of Jesus in Lisbon by Emperor Rudolf II. The inscription on the tomb in Lumiere reads, Here in these three tombs lie the three Irish knights who brought the head of St. Brigid, Virgin, a native of Ireland, whose relic is preserved in this chapel. In memory of which, the officials of the altar of the same saint caused this to be done in January AD 1283. In 1884, Cardinal Archbishop Moran of Sydney obtained a relic of the saint's tooth from the parochial church of St. Martin of Tours in Cologne, Germany, and gave it to the Brigidine Sisters in Melbourne. The cardinal wrote about the circumstances in which he obtained the tooth in a letter to the Reverend Mother of this convent dated 13, March 1906. I went all the way to Cologne on my return from Rome in 1884, on my appointment of Archbishop of Sydney to secure a portion of the precious relic of St. Brigid preserved there for over a thousand years. It is venerated at present in the parochial church of St. Martin to which in olden times was attached a famous Irish monastery. The relic is, if I remember aright, a tooth of the saint. At Cologne I found great difficulty in securing a portion of this relic. It was at first peremptorily refused. The pastor of St. Martin's declared that his parishioners would be at once in revolt if they heard that their great parochial treasure was being interfered with. I then had to invoke the aid of an influential canon of the Cathedral of Cologne, whom I had assisted in some of his literary pursuits and he set his heart on procuring the coveted relic. One of his arguments was somewhat amusing, it was the first time that an Irish archbishop of the remote see of Sydney had solicited a favour from Cologne. It was the new Christian world appealing to the old for a share of its sacred wealth. At all events our pleading was successful and, and I bore away with me a portion of the bone, duly authenticated, which is now the privilege of you good sisters to guard and venerate. Clare History, St. Brigid, Holy Wells, Patterns and Relics by Michael P. Payton and David W. Atherton www.clairelibrary.ie slash eolas slash cochlare slash history slash saint underscore brigade. In 1905 Sister Mary Agnes of the Dundalk Convent of Mercy took a purported fragment of the skull to St. Bridget's Church in Kilkerry. In 1928, Fathers Timothy Trainer and James McCarroll requested another fragment for St. Brigid's Church in Killister, a request granted by the Bishop of Lisbon, Antonio Mendes Bello. The city of Armagh had several associations with St. Brigid. In the 12th century, the city had two crosses dedicated to Brigid, though, according to the Monasticon Hibernicum, purported relics of the saint reposing in Armagh were lost in an accidental fire in 1179. In the 17th century Armagh also had a street named Brigid located near Brigid's Church in the area called Brigid's Ward. 
Iconography in liturgical iconography and statuary St. Brigid is often depicted holding a reed cross, a crozier of the sort used by abbots, and a lamp. Early hagiographers portray Brigid's life and ministry as touched with fire. According to P. W. Joyce, tradition holds that nuns at her monastery kept an eternal flame burning there. Leitmotifs, some of them borrowed from the Apocrypha such as the story where she hangs her cloak on a sunbeam, are associated with the wonder tales of her hagiography and folklore. In her lives, Brigid is portrayed as having the power to multiply such things as butter, bacon and milk, to bestow sheep and cattle and to control the weather. Plant motifs associated with St. Brigid include the white lilium candidum popularly known since medieval times as the Madonna lily for its association with the Virgin Mary, and the windflower anemone coronaria, called the Brigid anemone, since the early 19th century. Kildare, the church of the Oak Quercus Petraea, is associated with a tree sacred to the Druids. The colour associated with Brigid is white, worn not only by the Kildare United Irishmen during the 1798 rebellion, but also by Kildare sports teams in more recent times. Place names Kilbride, Church of Brigid, is one of Ireland most widely found place names, there are 43 Kilbrides located in 19 of Ireland's 32 counties, Antrim 2, Carlow, Cavan, Down, Dublin, Galway, Kildare, Kilkenny 3, Louse, Longford, Louth, Mayo 5, Meath 4, Offaly 4, Roscommon 2, Waterford, Westmeath 2, Wexford 4, and Wicklow 8 as well as two Kilbredies in Tipperary, Kilbredia and Toberbreda in Clare, Toberbredia in Kilkenny, Brideswell Commons in Dublin, Bridestown and Templebreedy in Cork and Rathbride and Brideschurch in Kildare. A number of place names are derived from CNOIC Bride, Bridget's Hill, such as Knockbridge in Louth and Knockbride in Cavan. In Wales, the villages of Lansantfraid Y. M. Machane, Lansantfraid and Lansantfraid, Saradigen are named after her, Lawn, meaning Church of, and Fraid, or Fraid, being the Welsh for Bride. In Scotland, East Kilbride and West Kilbride are called after Brigid. Lawnbride, near Elgin, Scotland is thought to be Pictish for Church of Brigid. <laughs> Biddy's Day Festival, Calorglin The Biddy is honoured every year at the weekend closest to the feast day of St. Brigid, 1 February in the mid Kerry region, with Biddy groups visiting rural and public houses. They carry a hay-stuffed Bridiog doll with them to ensure evil spirits are kept away from humans and animals for the coming year. The Biddy heritage is a mixture of Christianity Saint Bridget and ancient Celtic traditions Imbolc. Imbolc is one of the four Celtic festivals, along with La Bealtaine May Day, Lunasa the 1st of August, and Samhain the 1st of November. Traditionally, a visit from the Biddy guaranteed good luck, fertility, prosperity and to not receive a visit was considered a slight. In 2017 a festival was created to celebrate the Biddy tradition. The highlight is the torchlight parade of the Biddies through Calorglin town and the King of the Biddies contest held in Library Place. Topic. Other Topic. The artwork The Dinner Party features a place setting for Saint Brigid. In Haitian voodoo, Saint Brigid along with the goddess Brigid and Mary Magdalene is worshipped as the death Loa Maman Brigid, the consort of Baron Samadhi. Topic. See also Topic. Catholic Church in Ireland Topic. Notes Topic. Topic. External links Topic. This article incorporates text from a publication now in the public domain, Herbermann, Charles, ed. 1913. St. Brigid of Ireland. Catholic Encyclopedia. New York, Robert Appleton. Never mind the Bullocks, there's something about Street Bridget. De Blackham, Hugh. St. Brigid, the Mary of the Gale. The Saints of Ireland, The Life Stories of S.S. Brigid and Columptial, The Bruce Publishing Company, Milwaukee.